In this video, I will show you how to integrate the Fabric Data Agents, which recently went into preview at the time of this recording, into Azure AI Foundry Agents. So effectively, from an Azure AI Foundry Agent, you'll be able to send natural language queries back to Fabric, where the data agent can then be used to ensure that you're doing good math in order to answer the question. My name is Greg Beaumont. I'm a technical professional currently working at Microsoft. This video is my own and may not represent the views of my employer. Everything you see in this video can be reproduced from our free GitHub repo that we've made available to the public. I put this together along with my colleague, Ender Rana. And for this particular module, everything you see is working on 250 million rows of data, which is sitting inside of the fabric warehouse or lake house. It'll work with either option. The entire repo can be deployed to your Fabric instance in less than a couple of hours if you follow the directions. And it should be a minimal code experience for those of you who want to get started and reproduce everything that you've seen in this video. Several other previous videos that I've published have also referenced this repo. So you might wanna take a look at those if you need some help in getting things deployed. First, I will start off in Microsoft Fabric and you'll see I have my data agent demo open. This is a data agent within Microsoft Fabric. On the back end, it's using the warehouse from the repo that I just showed you along with five of the tables. And I did a previous video to show you how to build this. The interface has changed a little bit since that video. You'll now see that the example queries have a button up here at the top. I can open those up. They're the same as what you'll find in the repo. What this does is it tells the data agent how to do the math for specific scenarios. So for example, if you're looking at cost per day of ACE inhibitors in the state of Florida for internists in the year 2020, it will sum up the total cost, divide it by the total day's supply, and it'll return a null value if the denominator is zero or null. And then as I scroll down, it will do the joins to the other tables in order to get the additional information. For example, it knows that ACE inhibitors are a class of drugs where the generic name contains PRIL. Also that the word Florida maps to the state abbreviation, capital F, capital L. And it'll know that internists mean internal medicine and it maps year to the year 2020. So this information gives some context for the large language model to actually translate what's being asked into a valid query that's going to give good results, or as I like to call it, good math. Additionally, there are the data agent instructions, which are also available in the repo. And this will provide instructions such as uh, the example of how to filter for different types of classes of drugs, uh, because those class descriptions uh, aren't in the source database. Uh, such as, for example, all benzodiazepines contain Zolam or ZPAM within the generic name, and then also how to map uh, different uh, lingo for specialties uh, to the, uh, the specialty description that's within the database. Now, when this data agent has been published by hitting this publish button, you'll be able to see a URL. And within that URL, if I go ahead and copy it, and I'll paste it into a notebook, you'll see that there are two values here. There's the workspace ID, and then there's also the artifact ID or the, uh, the ID that maps to the specific deployment of a data agent. So to quickly show you how this might work, you can test it here within Microsoft Fabric. I might say show top 10 states in the year 2021 for total cost of ACE inhibitors. Hit enter and the large language model will translate that text into a response that should use a valid query in order to get the results. And here you'll see it's ranking the top 10 states along with the total cost. If I were to expand to take a look at the underlying query, you'll see that it is filtering the generic name for drugs that contain PRIL, which is the correct way to go get those ACE inhibitors. It's mapping to the year 2021, and it is giving you the top 10 states. So everything looks good here. Now let's move over to Azure AI Foundry, and I'll show you how to use that endpoint as something that can be called from a data agent 
outside of Fabric. So there's a number of videos out there on how to deploy an agent to Azure AI Foundry and how to set up Azure AI Foundry. I'm just gonna quickly move to building a new agent and then adding the integration point to Microsoft Fabric and that data agent. I'll go ahead and hit new agent. And over here on the right hand side, you'll see that I have a deployment of GPT-40 Mini that I'm using. As I scroll down, you'll see an option to add knowledge, which can then be part of this Azure AI Foundry agent. So I'll go ahead and hit add, select Microsoft Fabric, and you'll see I've already added the source, but if I were to go in and click on this test data agent bot, you'll see that it has some key values. If you were to add it from scratch, you'll see this view. And here's where you paste in that workspace ID and that artifact ID that I showed you back here in Fabric. So again, if I go to settings, publishing, copy that URL, I'll paste it into a notebook so we can take a look here. Here's the workspace ID, which would be pasted right here. And then you have your artifact ID, which is right here. You just come back, paste it right here, hit save or update, and then let's move back to that agent. So here in the agent, go to knowledge, hit add, Microsoft Fabric, select this data agent, hit connect, and you now have an API endpoint for a Fabric data agent available within this Azure AI Foundry agent. I won't adjust any of the settings at this time. I'm just showing how to enable this integration. I'll move to try it in the playground. And now we can start chatting on our data. So now I'll go ahead and test out a query. So for this example, I'll try out show top 10 cities in California by cost per day, prescribing ACE inhibitors in the year 2021. Hit go. You'll see that the Azure AI Foundry agent recognizes that this is a query that it needs to send to the Microsoft Fabric data agent in order to ensure that a relational database query is generated that's going to give valid results, or as I like to say, good math. And you'll see it gives a result of the top 10 cities in California by cost per day prescribing ACE inhibitors in the year 2021. And it sounds simple, but on the back end, this actually had to take the source data, join it to the geography table, filter for the year 2021, which came from the year table, sum up the total cost, sum up the total days, divide that numerator and denominator, account for null or zero values, and then rank the top 10 from that result. All of that happening on 250 million rows in the source fact table. So in summary, this is effectively an easy to integrate RAG pattern where you have your data stored in the Fabric warehouse, made accessible with accurate queries by the Fabric data agent, which can then be called by the Azure AI Foundry agent, which operates completely outside of Fabric and only calls it when it needs it in order to get good results. One of the criticisms of large language models in general is that they're not good at math and can sometimes give inconsistent results or that some of the newer models take a long time to do the math. This gives you the best of both worlds where you have an extremely high powered, capable, easy to use database on the back end with accurate query tools, which can then be called by the Azure AI Foundry agent that has access to all of the great AI tools available in Azure. Once again, everything that I showed here today can be completely recreated beginning to end using the free GitHub repo, which is linked in the description of the video. If you could like this video and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated.